Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Alhamdulillah, we have an uh, exciting new session. Um, now, I would uh, like to introduce our next speaker. And um, the topic is uh, Quran Teen, Recipe for Your Heart. Uh, I understand many of you have heard this joke already and it's starting to become uh, tiring. But the content here will be very beneficial. And on the plus side, Dr. Asif Rani has a lot of good jokes for you in his talk as well. Uh, Dr. Asif Rani uh, completed his master's and his PhD in Islamic studies in Tafsir and Ulum al Quran. He currently serves as a resident scholar of the Worcester Islamic Center uh, near Boston, Massachusetts, as well as a murabbi and guide for young Muslims, YM and Ikna ILF. Uh, and I would like to hand it over to Dr. Asif Hirani. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa ala amma ba'd. Ya'lamu anna Allah yuhyi al-arda ba'da mawtiha qad bayyanna lakum al-ayati la'allakum ta'qilun. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlul akhdatan min lisani. Yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li wazira min ahli. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Uh, first of all, I would like to begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask his protection from this coronavirus and all other evils. Ameen ya rabb. Jazakallah khairan to Sheikh Abdurrahman Khan for a beautiful reminder. He's our Sheikh, our Murabbi, our Muhsin. Um, and Jazakallah khairan Ammar for a beautiful uh, uh, introduction. Although I don't deserve this, but may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you inshallah. Um, just a few disclaimers before we can start. I just want to share three points today. But before sharing those three points, I just want to give you three disclaimers. First, please make a special dua for all the Ikna volunteers. May Allah reward them immensely. This effort of bringing the entire convention into the virtual convention requires a lot of effort and they didn't have much time. May Allah reward all the team of Ikna brothers and sisters and all the volunteers. Amin Ya Rab. May Allah reward you immensely for your sacrifices. Amin Ya Rab. Second disclaimer or second request which I would like to ask all of you is to please make a special dua for all the medical doctors, nurses, and medical staff who are in the front line of this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them, protect them, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them strength and courage so that they can help themselves and then eventually they can help all of us, inshallah. Because wallahi, the medical doctors, the nurses, the medical staff are the real mujahid. They are the real soldiers right now. They are in the front line. May Allah reward them immensely. Ameen, Ya Rab. Third request I would have from all of you before I can start is please make a special dua for all the married people, those husband and wife who are confined to their homes. And we all know that domestic violence is going up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inculcate love in their hearts so they can live peacefully and we can end domestic violence from our houses. Ameen, Ya Rab. So now, uh, uh, about those three points which we want to discuss. Um, the point number one, without, I don't have enough time because subhanAllah, I only have a few minutes left. Point number one is to compensate the deficiency. Now, I'll tell you what does it mean. By now, I assume that it won't be surprising for you that majority of the masjid, at least in U.S., at least in U.S., won't be having tarawi in the first half. I hope that everything will be fine and we can go back to masjid. But it looks like, it looks like, it's expected, it's anticipated that the first half, we won't be having tarawi, we won't be having those big iftar gatherings. Um, even some of the masajid or most of the masajid won't be even open for five-time daily prayer. It doesn't look like means may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this virus from the face of the earth. It is immense, miraculous mercy and we all can go back. But it's better to be proactive. And wallahi, this is heartbreaking. Wallahi, this is heartbreaking. For all of us, because Ramadan without Tarawi, it's hard to imagine. Ramadan without collective iftar parties, it's hard to imagine. Ramadan without socializing and those breakfasts or the pre-dawn meal at IHOP, it's hard to imagine. Um, usually people complain, usually people complain in Ramadan that, um, Imam, I'm too busy at work, I'm too busy at school. I'm not able to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or I don't have enough time to read Quran or understand Quran or listen to this tafsir or lecture. Well, now <laughs> kids are home in school. Now most of the people are working from home. So no excuse. Most of the volunteers 
of different Islamic organizations have complained that Imam, we are too busy in other volunteer work in the Ramadan and we couldn't spend much on much time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that one-on-one -on -one time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, now masajid are closed. They have suspended their activities. Now there is no other option. Some sisters who live in a very big family, they, they, they have complained that we have to cook lavish iftar because they are having if big iftar parties every other day. They said we don't have time, one on one time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, all of that is abolished. There is no excuse. Now you are not going anywhere. No one is coming to your house. And all you have is one on one time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should make a commitment to ourselves and be optimistic that we will gonna make this Ramadan one of the most amazing Ramadan of our life. Although, although there is every reason to think negatively about this coronavirus, but the one positive which I can see right now, it has given me the potentially the most beautiful Ramadan where I can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In terms of Taraweeh, I know, I know that this is not the fiqh class, this is just the reflection reminder time. Even though majority of these scholars of the Ummah agree that the in regular circumstances that Tarawi should be prayed in masjid but the minority group of scholars actually have said that even in certain occasions Tarawi at home is better and they said that actually Imam Malik was reported to said that if Tarawi will make your Iman stronger if you are praying at home individually and if by praying individually if your Iman will become strong then praying Tarawi individually is better so the point is that they had this disagreement. If nowadays, we are confined to follow this opinion because we are confined to our home. So I would recommend to all of you, including myself, turn your masajid, to turn your home into masajid if you haven't done already. Have tarawi at your home. If you are married, living with family, pray 4, 6, 8, 20, 36, whatever is easy for you. Read whatever is easy for you. Most of these scholars have given permission to open the Mus'haf during the Tarawih. Whatever is easy for you, but do not miss Tarawih at home. If you are alone, pray individually. If you want to change time, the best time for Tarawih is actually the Tahajjud prayer. So if you want to sleep early after Isha and wake up one or two hours before, that's also beautiful. But do not miss this opportunity. We all have to be the Imam. We have all have to compensate the deficiency. As I said, this is point number one. Compensate the deficiency. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not going to masjid in the first half now. Try to spend some time alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in asking dua in your own language, talking to him, accepting your mistakes, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be to remove your hardships, inshallah. Start your own khatra and halaqa. If you are in a family, Every day you should have, discuss stories of prophets with your family and with your kids. Something from the Quran, something from the Sunnah. If you are single, do this individually. Listen to the lectures and khatira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. This is point number one. Compensate the deficiency. Turn your houses into masajid. Second, point number two. Focus on Quran primarily in this month of Ramadan. You know, I know it's easy to become desynthesized with the current environment. Every day, thousands are people, thousands of people are dying, thousands of people. The number is going up each and every single day. And we are just into the, into getting into the habit or routine that, okay, so many people are dying. Yesterday, 2,000 people died. Today, almost 1,200, 1,500 people died in U.S. So what's new? So now it doesn't even move our hearts. We should ask ourselves, why are we not feeling the pain of the humanity? Why are we not feeling anything in our hearts, subhanAllah? And this is, uh, this is, the, the, uh, this is um, uh, the question which we should ask constantly. Why are we not feeling any pain for humanity? And if we are in that state where we are, where we are not feeling anything in the heart, nothing, no movement in the heart, then we should not become hopeless. We should not become hopeless, although although it's a scary stage, but we should not become hopeless because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hadid that if our hearts have become rusty, if our hearts have become rusty, then we can clean our heart through the Quran. Allah says, It is Quran, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have revealed to give the life to the heart after its death. 
So if our hearts in that stage, let us connect our heart to the Quran, inshallah. Again, subhanallah, subhanallah, one of the advice which Sheikh Abdurrahman was giving, and I would just repeat that, that with the flow of information, there are so many things to focus. Sira lectures, hadith lectures, academic fiqh lectures, so on and so forth. In the month of Ramadan, my request to all of you is that just focus primarily on the Quran. There are other things which are extremely important in terms of academic uh, nature. You can focus on the rest of the 11 months, but focus on the Quran from the Islamic senses in Ramadan because Ramadan is a month of Quran. And actually, it's the habit of our greatest scholar, subhanAllah. Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he was a scholar of fiqh, he was a scholar of hadith. But it was said by Imam Malik, كان المالك إذا دخل رمضان يفر من قراءة الحديث ومجالس أهل العلم بأقبل ولا تلاوة القرآن من المصحف. Imam Malik, it was reported about him that when the month of Ramadan will come, he would just focus on Quran. He would cancel his hadith and fiqh classes. Because this is a month of Quran. So that's what we need to do. Tajweed, recitation, even understanding. If you recite the Quran without understanding a single word, it won't change your life. You will get the reward. You will get the inspiration. You, you won't able to get intellectual, emotional guidance. Understand the Quran. Listen to the tafsir. Listen to the translations. Or read the translation and tafsir by yourself. Make a commitment that apart from recitation, apart from understanding, whatever I will understand from the Quran, I will going to implement. There is no disagreement on the Quranic text. If Quran says... وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا zina, Stay away from zina. I would end that girlfriend-boyfriend relationship. I will end that habit of pornography. I will end that. فَجْتَنِبُوا عَنِ الْخَمْرِ I will stop drinking, stop taking drugs. Make a commitment. Make a commitment that whatever I'll understand from the Quran, I will implement it from the day one. And just remember one thing. There is an academic approach to understand Quran and then there is a practical, a practical approach to study Quran. Focus on the practicality in this month of Ramadan more than academic approach. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan the most memorable experience for all of us and to protect all of us and to forgive our sins and remove this virus from the face of earth. I mean, Ya Rab. Just the last thing, inshallah. Just the last thing before I can end. First thing I mentioned is compensating the deficiency. And uh, by it, I mean actually turning our home into the masajid. Second, focusing on Quran primarily in this month of Ramadan. And now the third point, now the third point, cleaning our heart before feeling the sweetness of Ramadan. You know, one important thing, subhanAllah, is that coronavirus is killing people from outside. Every single day, thousands of people are being killed and may Allah protect all of us and our loved one and our families and our community. Amin, Ya Rab. But you know, there is one disease which we carry in our heart, which have killed almost all of us from a spiritual perspective. And that is hate and grudge towards each other. You won't able to enjoy the sweetness of Ramadan if you are preoccupied in hating other people. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this, that if we will stay alive or we will die in this coronavirus, means may Allah protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. But what's the point of keeping the grudge in our heart? What's the point of keeping the hate and animosity in our heart? If you have to die in few days and you, will you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this heart full of grudges, full of negativity? There's only one thing can be in your heart. Kullu ina in bima fihi A heart is like a container. It, either it can carry the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the hate against the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because they are, you don't have to forgive people. I know that you might say, oh, it's hard to forgive some of the individual because of what they have done. You don't have to forgive anyone because they deserve the forgiveness. No, that's a wrong concept of forgiveness. Forgive the people, not because they are special, but because of these reasons. Number one, because we have a small heart and we don't want to give big space in our heart for the hate and negativity. We want to have a beautiful sleep. We want peace of mind when we go to bed. So we don't want this preoccupy, or pre our mind is preoccupied with the negative thoughts. We don't want that. We want to forgive everyone so I can have a peaceful sleep and I can have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in this time of self-quarantine. Second, just give. Why we should forgive people? Not because they are special, but because we are forgiving people so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive me. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive me. Allah says, Allah tuhibbuna yaghfir Allah in yaghfir Allahu lakum. If you will forgive people, Allah will forgive you. Even if grievances are justifiable. You know, some of us, 
have have serious issues with the community members with the family members you might have you might say that imam asif is extremely hard for me to forgive some individual because this individual have done this this individual have done that i know grievances are justifiable maybe someone of someone have kicked you out of the whatsapp group someone didn't invite you for their daughter's walima all those reason stabbing at the back backbiting just forgive them so that inshallah hopefully allah will forgive you even though you think that you you might think that maybe they don't deserve the forgiveness but tell me one thing we have done so many bad things that at times we don't even deserve the forgiveness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but we are still hopeful that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us every single day we are asking for his forgiveness similarly manifest that reflection and forgive people why i'm saying this because in order to understand the quran properly in order to have the nur light of the quran in your heart you have to delete shift delete permanently delete erase that neg negative data from your heart so that eventually that quran can go into your heart if your heart is too busy in hating people you won't able to understand the sweetness of quran or sweetness of ramadan conclusion take all the negative thoughts and fear from your heart about coronavirus even the fear from your heart what will happen to economy potential job loss economic loss stock exchange what will happen to the market so on and so forth we as a muslim should know our check is out coming from wall street allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our razik yes we should do whatever is good for us we should seek the consult we should consult the people in uh, who know about the economy and so on and so forth but at the end of the day this negativity this fear can kill us from inside may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us and may we have the most amazing ramadan and life changing ramadan of our life we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this ramadan the most memorable experience protect all of us forgive our sins remove this virus and then inculcate love between our hearts ameen ya rab jazakumullahu khairan wa hasan al jaza I mean, so I mean, Zakalah Khair, Dr. Asif Hirani, uh, for those beautiful salient points uh, about how we can maximize, uh, you know, the time that we are stuck in this quarantine, uh, quarantine, quarantine, whatever. But uh, these are some beautiful points about how to conduct ourselves and how to conduct ourselves with our families and our relationship with Allah. Uh, we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to accept from us. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to bless our shayukh, to bless their families. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, bless this uh, this effort that we have and to bless all of us in this uh, in this quarantine. I would also like to make an appeal, uh, brothers and sisters, um, uh, you know, you, you've heard this throughout the day. Uh, please go to icna.org slash donate. There's going to be some more information about the work that ICNA is doing. And as our, as our teachers mentioned, that this is a time where we can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while we're locked up in quarantine, it might feel, it might seem like, there's not much we can do to serve Allah. We can sit and we can talk with Allah. We can pray tahajjud, we can read Quran, we can make dua, we can fast. But we might still seem like there's not much we're doing for the world. At that point, it's an opportunity for us to take whatever resources Allah has given us and to share that with others. Uh, and that's the, the one of the works that Ikna is doing uh, across education, across relief, across charity, across da'wah, that we're spreading the message of Islam. So icna.org slash donate. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.